Good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live. Hey, yo, I am Omni Dog here with my newly shaven co host, Omar. Omar, how's it going? This is not newly shaven, my friend. I have been clean shaven for a while now. I just haven't been on the show because oh. um, you guys booted me out of the Monday show because I didn't read those books. And then <laughs> I booted myself out of the last Thursday show. So I think the last show I did with you guys was was the Emily interview, right? Uh, I think so. That was like, what, 10 or, 10 or days ago or so? Yeah, where her mom just uh, made a punk out of you. <laughs> that made my day. So you've been waiting ever since then to jam, jam me up about that. You've yeah, we haven't. That we, in your holster? we haven't talked about that, man. We haven't <laughs> talked about that. So, yes, <laughs> thanks for having me, buddy. I'm, I'm excited uh, to be back because um, I can do this show, and then I'll do the Monday show, and then I'll be gone for about 10 days. That's right. Yeah. You're going to have yeah. fun. I hope so. I hope so. Um, so, yes. Let's, let's do it. Let's get this off. Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I haven't done this in so long. Who's our sponsor? Yeah, job interview, Omar. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be InStockTrades.com, where you can get up to 50% off on your collected editions. Loyalty discounts add an extra 2 to 3%. Every quarter gets you an Omnibros Live discount. Over $50 uh, of an order in the United States can get you free shipping. Fabulous customer service and fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. Yes. Well done. Well done. You are the voice of InStock Trades. Well, at least for Omnibros. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what did we decide to talk about today? Well, we got a long list of suggestions from Josh Angel. Very nice. Yes. And uh, we decided to talk about black and white comics. Black and white comics, right? Not manga, because that will well, be another episode. Right. Well, there is a manga in my pile that I read since I've read <laughs> a manga. <laughs> you and your damn loopholes, I swear. <laughs> you can pick some manga. We got tons of time. I've got about 12 books here. So What? You said top five. I didn't say top five. I said I just had picked five. And then Not I there. added some more on. I'm not going back downstairs. All right. Yeah. No <laughs> worries. Just so you know, though, like four out of those five books would have been a manga if we had done that. I, I don't see you really. You're going to have to define manga then to me. I don't. I don't. When I get to them, you can no. define them. You can define what makes a manga ish. Well, if, a, if the title, thinking. if the title is, if it's been translated into English from original Japanese, then yeah, you. So, well, then I think that's only one of my books. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. What is that book that we're talking about, by the way? Well, it's at the bottom of my pile. <laughs> oh, was that the last one you wanted to talk about? My no, it was bad. just the first one I pulled. Just a sec. <gasps> this is the size of my pile. Holy shit. Okay. Hmm. And I'm not going to talk in depth on each one. I mean, I'll just show pictures on each one. Arrgh! Um. That would be Uzumaki. Totally a manga. Right. I agree that it's manga. It reads from right to left, and it's Japanese, and it's extremely horrific. Uh, I It was a descent into madness. I really enjoyed this book, uh, and I'm not, of course, a huge manga fan, but it was just a descent into utter madness with great detailing, Brilliant artwork, and um, it was it was stomach churningly awesome. I loved this book. I think you're just in denial about being a manga lover. Like you, you really are. Okay, I you am. Just, you just don't know it yet. I <laughs> just don't know it yet. Correct. <laughs> you bought Akira day one. You I, well, I definitely did. I have Akira still sitting there in the shrink wrap. Sad Someday man. I will read that. Such a sad man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Uzumaki is amazing. I really like that one. Um, he did another one called Gyo, and um, he did the like a Museum of Terror trilogy. Every one of his books is amazing. I I can't recommend Yuji Ito enough, even if you don't like manga like Jess. Um, 
you would really enjoy it. And by the way, these books, even though they're black and white, don't let that turn you away. Don't. Yeah, I, I know. I think there's some people in the group. I remember uh, at least reading on the Facebook group that black and white just turns them off. Like they have to have color. Hmm. Um, and I think that's why some people can't read manga because all of it is in black and white just about. But yes, even though these books are in black and white, don't don't let that be the reason why you're missing out on some of the best comics out there. Right, I um, agree with that. So I am going to go with my first choice, Blankets. Mm. I love Blankets. This is by Craig Thompson. And it's a story about first love and long-distance relationships and two wonderful characters that fall for each other. Um, I can't recommend this enough. This is some of the art here by Craig Thompson. And yeah, I fell in love with the characters. I read this in, I believe it was my wife bought me this. So I set up one night and just read it and I couldn't put it down. It is wonderful. I enjoyed it so much. I told her to read it. So yeah, it's about, you know, first love, um, innocence, losing that innocence and eventually growing up and growing distant things like that. It's, it's a wonderful, not just a love story between a boy and a girl, but a boy and his younger brother. I think it's great. I love it. Uh, now, he did another book I have not read, but um, what, ha, what is it? Habab Hababi? Hab Hababi? Habibi? Yeah. Habibi. Yeah. Isn't that what he did? Craig Thompson? I, uh, I, I haven't, actually I haven't read it. it so I, don't but know. I, heard, I heard it's quite excellent, too. I have not read it myself, so that's why I can't recommend something I haven't read. I'm not a poser. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I just you know. Um, so what's next for you, buddy? Uh, that would be "Too Cool to Be Forgotten" by Alex Robinson, the box office poison fame. Uh, this guy, uh, I recommend this book all the time. This guy and Geo reminded me um, because it slipped my mind that it was in black and white. This guy goes to hypnotherapy to try and quit smoking cigarettes and he ends up journeying back and reliving his high school years. Um, but with the, the brain of his current, you know, it's like, uh, his current brain and all of a sudden he's back in his high school years and his high school body, but with his adult brain in it. Oh and God, what I would give for that. I know <laughs> there's so many <laughs> what, things. What I any changed. of us would give for that. I know I'd only change every single day of high school like that. Um, but this is a great book. It's so you would, you would smack comic books out of your hand. Stop reading comic books and go talk to women. Mm, he, um, the first thing I'd change, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wasn't reading. I would take. Um, what would I do if I went back to high school? It's a good question. Oh, um, I'd, buy, I'd buy more comic books um, that are worth a lot more money now. Tell myself. <laughs> Good point. What a waste of a power, right? I'm like, oh, I could s save thousands of people from this horrible disaster, or I could be selfish and buy some comic books. Yeah. I, um, yeah, what would I do? I, I, it would be a mistake for me to talk to girls, uh, still because I still don't know how to talk to girls. So, uh, <laughs> I think I would have taken, some things more seriously and some other things less seriously. The things I took too seriously, I, I try and calm down about. And then the things that I uh, didn't take seriously, I'd take them more seriously. Although I did study a lot. Um, I got fairly decent grades, but I took golf way too seriously on the golf team. And I should have just been having fun. You were part of a golf team? I was on the high school golf team, yeah, for four years. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I can see that. See that I was in the so on the soccer team. Well, sure. You're from Peru. Yeah. Uh huh. Racist stereotypes are true sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. But I had to. Qu I remember having to quit because I had to get a job, and I'm like, well, I gotta have money. That was a that was a pretty bad decision. I wish I had stayed and finished it out my senior year. So yeah, it's funny. Like th these questions get brought up, and I take a serious tone to them. I'm like, wait, what would I do if I were to ha if I had the ability to travel back in time? <laughs> Everybody's having a hard time with a high school golf team. <laughs> Nobody's heard of a high school golf team, really? Well, oh, I was just basing it on the shirts that you wear. All those little uh, 
preppy polo shirts. <laughs> oh, like the one you're wearing right now. <laughs> yeah, the one I have on right now. Um, that's so funny that nobody's ever uh, heard of golf teams. There's plenty of golf teams. I live in Virginia now, and every high school has a golf team. And I grew up in California, and we every high school had a golf team there. So I don't know about in between the coasts, but um, – <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, yeah, there's, I, high school golf teams are just a part of my life. So I don't know how we got off on that. Um, you told your high school self not to take, uh, golf so seriously. I yeah. And have more fun with it. Yeah. Um, so really quick, before I get to my next, uh, book, I wanted to give a shout out to one of the guys in the chat, Jimmy Owens. He sent me a really, um, nice package from in suck trades that was really nice thank you jimmy it just it, it got here today the box is here i've been out all day uh but it, it's here and i will give you a proper shout out on my channel not nice this, not this lesser known channel called omni bros live <laughs> hmm. joking you're saving Straight a good bullets. stuff for your own channel no come on jess <laughs> i'm don't hold out on you son of a bitch uh stray bullets I was hesitant to read this book because of David uh, Lap Lapham Lapham. Where's uh, where's Cycle Cleveland to correct me on my pronunciation of these names? Uh, David <laughs> Lapham Lapham Lapham. I like to think it's Lapham, but anyway, he had a horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible story on Batman, or was it? It was Detective Comics. Probably one of the worst Batman stories I've read, and I'm like, I am never reading anything about that guy again. Uh, I'm glad I was wrong. I, actually, it was Kurt Kiefer, uh, the comic book binding guy, that said, no, you're taking that book with you. So I was hanging out with him one day in Louisville, Kentucky, and he gave me this book because I told him how much I hated that run on Batman. <laughs> and I'm so glad I read it. It is so good. And this omnibus is so cheap. It's like, well, I think it's so cheap because it's, I've seen it in a lot of places discounted. It's like thirty dollars for all this stuff. I think retail sixty, but um, I've seen it discounted for like thirty at fifty percent off. Have you read this? Yeah, I read it back in when it was coming out in singles. It's uh, the first place I ever heard "cool beans" used as an expression. You never heard "cool beans"? No, not until I read it in that book. Did you miss on out on the eighties or something? What happened? Uh, I was alive during golf. the eighties. Yeah, I was playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> I was playing golf during the eighties. So yeah, you fucking nerd. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I was cool a beans. golf nerd. Cool beans. So yes, if you haven't read this, it's got a huge cast of characters uh, and how their lives intertwine with each other through a series of crimes, and it bounces throughout different years. I like to say it's more in chronological order as the issues uh, go further and further. This is not everything. The book is is still being printed by Image. I think he just had another collection come out, not like this, but in a proper like. Oh, really? I didn't know six that. Or seven issue collection because I know there's hard covers of this. Um, is that not safe for work? Nope. There's not boobies. Yeah, those. Ah, that's fine. Shadow covering those boobies. Um, but yeah, this book was just so surprising. I loved it. Hey, speaking of cool beans, there's a panel right there where the kid's wearing a shirt that says "Cool Beans." This one here. I don't know if you can see it, but he's wearing it. Um. Anyway. Cool beans. Very, very good. Um. I highly recommend it. It's if you like stuff by Brew Baker and Rucka, definitely check this out. Mm -hmm. and I was gonna say Parker by Darwin Cook. That's up there too, but. That might have a little bit of a color. All right, brother. What's next? What do you got? But I don't think you can talk about comics without talking about the master himself. And let me see if I can find in this collection a good something I can show you. That would be R. Crumb. This is uh, R. Crumb handbook. And all my R. Crumb collections are upstairs, but he is the master of pen and ink. Um, he is considered a mo modern classic uh, artist. Uh, they did a movie about him called Crumb that was a fabulous movie. Whoops, I can't show you that. <laughs> it begins. Yeah, it begins. There's a lot I can't show you. He's 
He is. Um, I don't think Emily's mom's on the chat tonight, so he <laughs> I still wouldn't show you. Uh, here's Mr. Natural, so it's just a bunch of scritchy, scratchy stuff. Um, but yeah, Arkham is an amazing artist, an amazing writer, probably a weird person. I think it's safe to say. And this book was cool. It came with a CD of his favorite music, which was. Um, I think he likes bluegrass or no, he likes, he likes a bunch of weird old music um, that can be played on like the banjo. So it came with a CD that I've never played because I'm not into that kind of music. CD music? His kind of bluegrass or, or blues. Maybe it's the blues he likes. Um, he doesn't like modern rock or anything like that here's another example of his no i can't show you that <laughs> i love it the heartbreak of the old cartoonist i can show you that but anyway I, I i have never for as long as i've been reading comic books i have never read any of his stuff really i think you'd really enjoy it it's um, like was he fritz the cat that's the yeah the, that's his most famous thing that's also the thing that he hates the most because he hates the fact that the the guy that produced that movie botched it up so bad, and and I don't think R. Crumb got any kind of money from it. Um, uh, so yeah, Fritz the Cat was something he created, but he um, helped create Zap Comics and the Underground uh, Comics, C O M I X Underground Comics. He was there at the birth of that in San Francisco. I believe he's from Cleveland originally. But he is the master of cross hatching, and um, I th he was always affiliated with the Grateful Dead because he um, he did like there's a famous cover that he did for him on one of their albums, and he actually doesn't even uh, like Grateful Dead's music or rock and roll or anything. He likes some kind of bluesy music from the twenties, I think. So, huh? I. I watched uh, what was it, American Splendor, the story of uh, Harvey. Oh Kinder. yeah, yeah. He, he was in there because they were friends. Right, they were friends in Cleveland, and um, I think they shared a love of jazz. And yeah, they both collected records. It reminded me of like watching a documentary with you and one of your old friends. <laughs> yeah, those American Splendors. That was really cool to see those early American Splendor stories drawn by R. Crumb. Um, that was that that was a cool movie and I think American Splendor is a cool comic. That's a great black and white comic right there, American Splendor. I found the black and white comic. American Splendor. Um yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. Like I said, that's a, that's an area of comic books I never dove into. That that kind of stuff. That is probably would you say that is the very first independent comic book? Oh gosh, I don't know. Those? I can magazines, those underground. I think uh, Zap was considered the first of its kind back in '67 or '68 or whenever it was printed. Um, you know, Bill Griffith of Zippy the Pinhead fame was in it, and um, I don't know, maybe Spain was in it. I can't. I I don't know. There's all, all those underground artists were in it, um, but. I don't, it, it's hard for me to say if that was the birth of independent comics. I know that was the birth of underground comics. What you know, what they considered um, no holds barred. They could draw whatever they want and make any kind of social commentary they wanted. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, so moving on, probably one of the most important comic books that I put on everybody's must-read list. It's mouse. Mm. I um, I had to talk about this. This is uh, Art sure. Spiegel, Art Spiegelman's mouse. So it's a uh, it's a story about you know a father and son done, but they're mice, right? Other than the fact that they're animals, it doesn't matter. It's uh, based on a true story about uh, a dad that was in a concentration camp and then growing up, and yeah, so everything is done through animals, like. The cats are Nazis, and then dogs are American soldiers. It's a relationship with 
um, his father and his mother, and it's a it's a, it's a pretty dark read. I mean, it's pretty powerful. I really like I really like this. I was um, I think I was in high school when I read this. I read this at the in my library. I was like, because they had they only had like two comics. This is of course uh, early nineties, so they didn't have really anything. They had this and like maybe the Tales from the Crypt comic book based on the movie. No, uh, not Tales from the Crypt. I'm sorry, uh, Creep Show comic book based on the movie, uh, done in the style of Tales from the Crypt comics. But they had this, and I was like, huh. I I, w- I mean, you know, I was a kid, and I was into artists like Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri, Wills Portacio, Rob Liefeld. So when I looked at this, I'm like, man, this looks so stupid. Why would anybody waste their time reading this junk? But I read it when um, that's what it was. I had Saturday school. Oh, you? <laughs> of course I did. Um, and I read it when I was in Saturday school. And I'm glad I had Saturday school because it was worth Saturday finding. school? Shut like up. in Breakfast Club? Uh, yes, except not as cool as Breakfast Club because we didn't have Molly Ringwald, <laughs> my dumbass, there because uh, everybody else was apparently good. Um, but I found this, yeah, at the library, and I and I read it that Saturday morning. I'll never forget. And that's it, man. So thank God for Saturday School. I found this wonderful book. If you have not read this, you definitely need to check it out because it's probably one of the most important comic books you would you'll ever read. Yeah, and I agree all in with black that. and white and. That's what I would do. I would travel back in time and smack myself upside the head for thinking this is horrible, horrible art. <laughs> it's one of the most important comics ever printed. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It um, helped give comics some extra legitimacy back in the uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s when it came out in Raw. Um, the big Raw was always either like this size or this size. Um and it was first serialized in that, and then it came out in book form. Yeah, Mouse is incredibly powerful, telling the complicated story of uh, of Art and his dad, and uh, it's really compelling reading. It's very compelling. Yeah, it's it's a must. I I can't. I think. I mean, the other books on my stack are great, and I can highly recommend them. But that, if I were to tell you to get like just one book out of the ones I'm recommending that that would probably be the one. It's wonderful. Um, all right, Jess, what's next? Well, I'm going to take the complete opposite approach to <laughs> mouse and talk about Eltingville club. You love that book. I do. <laughs> More than milk was... and cheese, huh? More than milk and cheese. Well, milk and cheese is also in this stack, but you... uh... <laughs> What? I've got a huge stack because I didn't know yeah, what you were, we're like, gonna... hey, Omar, I got five books. I'm like, awesome. What are they? Okay, <laughs> well, I won't use those. <laughs> You're like, I've got 30 books I want to talk about. And guess uh, what? what? They're Whatever. all the ones you wanted to talk about. All right, go yeah, ahead. Well, no, I left you bone in Sin City. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <My bone. laughs> and you got Mouse, too, which is the most important book ever. So anyway, the Eldingville Comic Book Science Fiction Fantasy Horror Role Playing Club. Um, is hilarious because it gets first of all it's got fabulous evan dorkin art and it gets nerds down to a t it is extremely letter perfect as in its depiction of breaking open wonder bread bags at the grocery store to get the card out of it to the collectible card and hoping that godzilla is a good movie the one with Matthew Broderick, the guys are going into it saying, please don't suck, please don't suck, please don't suck. And, of course, it sucked, so they came out disappointed. Um, Eltingville is just super fun. It makes super fun of super dorks, and I can see myself in every one of these characters. Um, <laughs> the I, truth comes out. <laughs> yeah, I can see myself in every one of these characters. Um, it is uh, extremely nerd-friendly and a lot of fun. Eltingville Club, the exact opposite of Mouse. I don't know if it's the exact opposite of Mouse, but um, that's the one that you recommended to me. I had never read that. I had read uh, Milk and Cheese. I was a big fan of Milk and Cheese. Um, So I I have to talk about 
Strangers in Paradise. Ah. The wonderful, beautiful story of Francine and Kachu. So great love story coming of age. And uh, rereading this a couple of years ago, I remember when it went through several changes, like um, it was abstract studio and then image got it. So they even had like Jim Lee do some of the artwork in here, which <laughs> was kind of crazy. Um, and then it was, um, I think it finished out with his abstract studio. I can't remember, but yes, it's a, classic love story about two girls that maybe are crushing on each other. Um, I don't want to give too much away because it's, it's a wonderful read. It's a long read, but it's well worth it. Um, I know that he's bringing it back, isn't he? Or is it back already? Um, I think I read something about Strangers in Paradise coming back in some kind of form. Yeah. Yeah, I I haven't read it, but... I thought this had a really good ending. I don't know what else he can do with it. I mean, as much as I want to see the characters again, or as much as I would love to see the characters again, I'm I'm fine with the way that this ended. Um, yeah, I, I can't, you know, love story, lesbians, bisexuality, jerks, men are jerks. <laughs> men are jerks. Terry Moore. Guy's awesome. I mean, he did other books we could... Right, I'm, do you have any Terry Moore books in your? I thing? do. I have Motor Girl right here. Okay, cool. I was gonna say he did uh, Rachel Rising and Echo. I haven't right. read. I haven't read Echo, so I don't know. I can't really recommend that. But Rachel Rising for sure. But um, I haven't. I own Motor Girl. I just haven't read it yet. I know you really liked it. I did. I enjoyed this a lot. Um, it's about a girl and a gorilla. And uh, she's a mechanic, and the gorilla is with her, in, and it includes aliens, uh, friendly aliens, and evil aliens um, that show up. And it's just her weird and wacky adventures. Uh, it's got a brilliant ending that um, she's a, a wounded war vet, and it's got a uh, it's a lovely story. It's a quick read, but it's a a really good read um, that I really, I just really enjoyed this um, it, because it tells the story. I can't, I don't want to give anything away, but it, it tells the story about her uh, being a mechanic with this gorilla as her friend um, with, with these um, spacemen. And you're kind of wondering because the gorilla is sentient and talks to her and is, um, you're wondering all throughout the book, what is the deal with the spaceman and the gorilla? And I will say it wraps up brilliantly. Um, I'm about it too much without giving something major away, but just suffice to say that this is Terry Moore doing great work. Uh, it's not um, a thick work. I mean, you can, I finished this in under an hour, um, but it is, it is wonderfully readable. Um, and it, um, the last third of the book, I would say the last third or last quarter of the book really pulls at your, uh, heartstrings. It is an extremely emotional book, uh, that I found highly enjoyable. And it came with this Terry Moore collector card that you don't have to rip open a bag of Wonder Bread for. It comes with the book. And it's like a, maybe it's a sticker. Well, oh, I think I, I think that's. Get, how did you get that? I didn't get that. Oh, you got it through the website then. I book. got it through the website. Yeah, uh, this is a sticker that you could. It's a book plate, so I haven't. It's loose in my book. I haven't uh, stuck it in my book yet, but I I like stickers, so maybe I'll do that after this. I like peeling stickers off and putting them all over the place. Yeah, I was a big fan of Garbage Pail Kids for that reason. Right. Those were awesome. And Dinosaurs Attack and Mars Attacks, all those great uh, cards that told the story. Okay, um, so might as well get talk about this. Monster of a book. Sin City. Oh, yeah. All right. Before anybody gives me shit, I know there's a couple of panels in here that have color like yellow and red. From that yellow bastard. 
Yeah, but I mean, you know, 90% of it is done with this awesome Frank Miller style that he kind of perfected in this series, man. I mean, he, yeah, I remember guys were mimicking this style when this came out. Even Jim Lee with his, uh, what was it called? Death Blow, that image book. Yeah, Jim Lee was trying to mimic this kind of style. People fell in love with it. I, I, you know, it's a nice cross between American and um, manga artwork. It's great. Yeah, it is amazing artwork that he pioneered, I think. Yeah, he really did. I mean, it is, and it works so good in black and white. You know, I mean, The Dark Knight Returns, that kind of art style, you could kind of see where it was going with stuff like this, that and uh, what was the Ronin. But by the time you get to this, it's just, holy shit, I love this book. It's great. Did you ever see the movie, the first movie? Yeah, there, I cheated a little bit. There, I saw the first one. Yeah, I liked it. I haven't seen the second one. I didn't um, see the second one, but I really liked the first one. I thought I the thought first was, one was good. I thought it was done well. Yeah, there's that yellow bastard. Panels like that. Yeah. Just great stuff, man. Frank Miller. This is probably... Uh, and, you know, I just recently reread year one. I want to say that was his A game stuff, but I mean, mm. this is up there. This is this is solid. It's a whole new, you know, set of characters that he created just for this world. Um, I don't know why the hell the uh, Dark Horse let this damn thing go out of print. They should bring it back. Yeah, I it's it was ground. I think it was groundbreaking art, and it was meant to be read fast. He said. He wanted you to blaze right through it. That's why it's so simple and spartan and spare. He just wanted you to read it really fast and go right through it. So I thought that was interesting, that he didn't want you to ponder it or take your time, just blaze through it. Yeah, it was a quick, I mean, it's a quick read. All seven books in there. I I think going back, I think I would have loved to have bought the library editions instead. Do you own? I own yes. that edition. Yeah, it's, it's a hard... It's a hard, it's a cumbersome read, like Colossal Conan. It's hard to yeah. read it. I don't have that big of a problem with Colossal Conan. I don't know why. But with this, I wish I had gone back and gotten the uh, library editions, the two box sets. Mm hmm. How could Just not have seen the second Sin City having seen the Jessica Alba cheesecake posters? <laughs> Good was question. She, was she in that movie? I, I don't know. I, don't, I know they I, replaced I never, some of the cast. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I um. I don't know. I never. I never saw it because I heard it wasn't as good as the first one. So I just didn't bother to see it. But I'd like to see the first one again. Now that I think about it, I thought it was really well done. Yeah, I thought it was good too. But I just I haven't heard good things about the second one yet. Right. Or, all right, Jess, what do you got? Speaking of comics being turned into movies, I haven't seen this movie yet, but I love this comic book, and I know I bet you love it too. I killed giants. I saw the movie, and, oh, you did? I, and I love the comic book. Yeah, it was available for streaming on Amazon when, oh, okay. when, it, when it came out, and now it's available. Yes, this is the one that was joking about being a manga. Oh. It's by Joe Kelly, though. Oh, you're joking. Okay. Well, the, the art is... Uh, um, who is it? It's uh, Ken, Ken, um, Ken Nomura? Yeah. Nomura? JM it's Japanese Ken artist. Uh, okay, Omar, you, you make up the rules as you go along. That's cool. I always do. Yeah, I picked up on that. Um, everybody knows about this book. Everybody loves this book. Um, it's about a girl and her wearing the wears bunny ears and... Her struggle with um, a dying mother and her struggle to fit in. And she's battling these giant monsters throughout, or prepping to get ready to battle with these giant monsters throughout the book. I can't go to the last part of the book because I don't want to give anything away, but it is brilliantly written. This is a book that will pull your heart right out of your chest. It is extremely emotional and um, really well told. Uh, I can't say it's fun, but it, it is remarkable. It's not a, <clears throat> I would put it sort of on the emotional playing field of Mouse uh, that it is um, 
it deals with uh, some heavy topics, some very heavy topics. Um, but it is, um, I, it's one of a kind, I think. I think this is Joe Kelly's, one of his most brilliant books. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see him do this and then doing that goofball stuff with Deadpool. So the guy has a lot of, I mean, he's talented. It's, it's amazing. I I also love that book so much. And you know, he wrote the script for the movie. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's it's a pretty faithful ad adaptation. I think a lot of people uh, passed up on it because of the Christopher Columbus tie-ins. The director of apparently not a good Harry Potter movie, but I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fans. And more importantly, Cycle Cleveland got hit by a car <laughs> the other day on his mm, bike. I see that. Yeah, so he's okay. He said the bike frame is cracked in half. Sorry about that, John P. That sucks, man. I'm glad you weren't hurt. Yeah, me too. Oh, he flew 20 feet. Wow. According to some woman who stopped. Wow. Man. Well, I'm glad he's okay. Yeah, glad you're okay and in the chat, buddy. Yes. Um. So I guess I could uh, pull some more out while you're still talking. Because <laughs> uh, I thought you were just choosing five, and I'm like, yeah, I got a couple. Well, I have a few more. I mean, you can pull whatever you want. Go, you can pull a whole thing of manga if you want. I don't care. Oh, that's whatever all. Whatever you want to do. That would require me to go downstairs. I'm not going to do that. We can do the manga episode another day. Um, you need, just need to read some manga. Top five manga that Jess needs to read so he can shut the hell up about manga being there. <laughs> I, I, it's just not for me. I never, I never rip Bullshit. on it. Bullshit. It's not for you. You just had a manga. Your very first choice was this I know. Monkey. That manga was for me, but I tried reading a bunch of others, and they, I a, just couldn't get into them. All right, that's this is another topic. I'll talk to you after this episode. <laughs> Some bullshit I'm hearing. Anyway, what? go ahead and, and, and name your other one. How did we? Uh, we allowed to talk about Calvin and Hobbes and. Um, yeah, actually, I've Arsad. got. I can. I can. Yeah, I've got complete peanuts right here. Why not? It's a collected edition. Good. Oh, dude, my daughter read all of those. Every uh, you must be so proud of her. I'm so proud because I have not done that. <laughs> I've owned these <laughs> books for years, and I'll open one up every once in a while to look through it. Um, um, go ahead and show it off. It's wonderful. Okay, well, I got. Uh, I mean, everybody knows about peanuts, and these are the classic collections by Fantagraphic, which are absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm so impressed and proud of your daughter that she blazed through. What a treat to be able to read all of peanuts like this. It's really well done and well presented. Um, by Fantagraphics. I mean, Fantagraphics does a great job on all their stuff that they present. They are, they just take loving good care of all the stuff they put out. And the I don't have the entire Peanuts got it up through like from the beginning from 1950 to 1965, I think, is all I got. Um, but yeah, Peanuts, I... Everybody knows Peanuts. Um, what they might not know is that I used to correspond with Charles Schultz when I was a young man, uh, when I was a young lad, when I was about the ages of 8 to 11. He was a pen pal of mine, and I, still have, the yeah, I still have the letters he wrote me. Um, he lived in Sebastopol, California. I lived in Carmel. And somehow I got his address. My dad got his address somehow. And I just sent him letters, and he would he would either type out um, his responses, or he would sometimes handwrite them. I'm assuming you know he had like a secretary write them out, uh, uh, type them out. But who knows? It was back in like '67, '68, and yeah, he he would write me these letters, and it was great <laughs> to have a correspondence oh. with him. Wow, dude, that's really cool. I have um, I don't have a a story to one up yours, like. I guess I could make one up. <laughs> I am Carl Schultz, illegitimate child. <laughs> he never wrote me pen pal letters. That's why I, I am a bastard child. Um, no, <laughs> that's that's really cool. I didn't know that. We talked about peanuts so many times. You never brought that up. No, I'll have to go get some of the letters and show you sometimes. It wasn't. I mean, he was he was very nice to have done that for a little kid. I mean, he would never. It wasn't like he wrote me these three-page responses. It'd be a short response. What, but what kind of questions would you? 
What kind of questions would you ask him? <laughs> well, at the time, back in the mid 60s, late 60s, he and Mad Magazine were gently poking fun at each other. There would appear something about Peanuts and Mad Magazine, and then he'd have uh, like Alfred E. Newman appear in Peanuts somehow, you know, with What Me Worry and it. And so I, I wrote him about that one time, and I, <clears throat> I said, um, I knew he had sons that were my age or slightly older. I think his kids were a little bit older than I was. And I, <laughs> for some reason at eight years old, I said, eight or nine, I said, um, do you think I could buy your son's mad magazines? And he, he wrote back and said, you know, thank you for the kind offer, but I don't think my son wants to sell his mad magazines. Sincerely, Charles Schultz. <laughs> that's all. <awful>. Oh, Betty. <laughs> he, dude, that's so cool. Uh, I think the only story I have similar to that was running into, of course, I was a grown ass man. Uh, running into uh, Don Rosa in Louisville, Kentucky, the, the, Mm. writer and author of the Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge books because uh, he lives in Louisville. And I remember running into him um, like we were just at a restaurant and I recognized the back of his head. I told this story and I ran up to him and I'm like, oh, man, Don Rosa, I recognize the back of your head. And I know that sounds really weird. I probably should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> he was so kind. He was like, man, I wish I had a book to give you you're like the second person and that's how he talks um you're like the only uh he said you you are the second person in kentucky that has ever recognized me out in the streets then i saw him at uh, atlanta when i went to dragon con later on the following year and i told him that story he was like oh yes i remember yeah so not as cool as having charles schultz as here sparky did you call him sparky you start <laughs> sparky dear sparky what's up sparky look here i'm having women <laughs> women troubles right <laughs> I, I can't find solutions of in your peanuts books <laughs> that, no it was so cool. dope it was dopey questions like can i buy your son's mag mad magazines i mean i can't <laughs> even believe it I, I need to go i still have them i need to go um I need to go uh, find them so I can show you. Um, it was on some really cool stationery, I think, that may have featured Peanuts characters. And I was so into Peanuts back in, like, 68 and 69 and 70 as a kid. Um, so, yeah, that that was amazing that he would write me. Oh, man. So this has been funny. Uh, the chat's trying to figure out what year you were born. It's been some pretty... Uh funny dates out there yeah i saw you threw out a date thanks jerk uh well i was rounding it down a little bit <laughs> yeah ninja turtles years. that's right tyler blunt says turtles win the end turtles win the end um it, it's up on my list definitely this is uh the this is the original ones this is by eastman and laird and self-published book this is the IDW collection. There are Color Works collection too, which added color to the black and white art. But I prefer the black and white stuff. And reading this, speaking of Frank Miller, you could tell how heavily influenced these guys were by Frank Miller. It's quite obvious. Um, you have, you know, the foot ninja instead of the hand. You have the inner monologue of the turtles, just kind of like Daredevil. And um, later on, Batman, the way Frank Miller wrote them, you know, we are the shadow. We are ninja. Oh, yeah. This stuff was good. I, I really liked it. When was that and, first published? I want to say 87 or 80. No, no. It had to be 85, probably. Uh, originally published. Let me see if I can find it. If only we had this internet in front of us. Instead of me looking through this stupid book, um, <laughs> I think eighty-five. Jess, let me double check. Maybe the chat is answered already. Sherry Larson says eighty-four. Eighty-four, yes. So, nineteen eighty-four. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's um, it's up there, and I don't think these guys knew what they had because when they turned this into an animated TV series, holy shit! This is the reason why we don't have why Transformers got canceled. By the way, this is the reason why He Man got taken out. Like all these cartoons we grew up with in the '80s, 
everything changed when these four Ninja Turtles took to the stage in 1987. It's like everything got canceled. And toys were made. Um, Stan Sakai, I'm sure he made our list somewhere, uh, has a character, Usagi Yojimbo, who they were like, hey, let us make a toy of Usagi. And he was like, yeah, okay, cool. And the Usagi is this over-muscular dude with like, um, have you ever seen the Ninja Turtles toys, the original ones? No. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. No. Never mind. They were pretty muscular, veiny characters, and kind of looks nothing like the uh, the Ronin that he plays in the books. So, yes, Ninja Turtles for sure. It's fun. It's a good read too. I like it. I and I really enjoy the IDW stuff that they've been putting out. I've been going through those, but those are in color, so that's cheating. But the original ones are solid too. Speaking of Yuzagi, I knew it. Look at you pulling out that well. <laughs> yeah, this is some of the finest storytelling with the most heart, uh, the most action, the most fun, uh, deep yet lighthearted, but very, um, uh, I don't know. It's hard to describe this other than is having a lot of heart and hitting all the right notes, all the emotional notes that you want in a comic. Uh, making you just want to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading about this um, samurai rabbit who um, goes from town to town and has a uh, cast of characters that you fall in love with. So this is a classic black and white book. And what, were you going to say this was manga too? Because stands the guy's <laughs> Japanese-American or something? <laughs> yes. Oh, I was going to say it. It's what black am I and do white. With you? It's got funny, cartoony characters. Yeah, what am I going to do with you? You're going to have me on the Monday show. So I can <laughs> bust your ball some more there. Oh, my God. Do you think I'm Gabe or something? Oh, oh, oh Gabe. I thought you said something else. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me answer that on the air. I have my <laughs> theories. <laughs> um, No, I don't think you're Gabe. Uh, but as far as black and white, I mean that's 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 what I have. That's on my list right now, with the exception of like yeah, Far Side or Calvin and Hobbes. I would definitely add those on there. A lot of the stuff that you showed, I would totally, one hundred percent agree on. I haven't read Punk Rock Jesus yet. That's black and white. I just picked that up last month. Mm -hmm. um, but I picked that up at Half Price Books. Is um, it looks is White so Knight in black and white? Batman White Knight? No, that's in color. That's in color? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Oh, hell, I read two issues. Why don't I remember? Yeah, yeah, it's in color. Got anything else on your list? For books ever is Concrete by Paul Chadwick. This oh, is all yes. black and white, although I think there were some color issues at some point. But this is amazing art, and it's hard. To, it's kind of a goofy concept that aliens come to Earth, take out the brain of this um, special assistant to a congressman, put it in the body of this uh, concrete being. So he's he's a concrete guy made out of concrete with the brain of a human. <clears throat> and we revisit the scene of what the, when they did it to him. And they also did it to a cow, I think. And there's seven books in this series, and it's uh, very well told. His adventures, um, he, you know, he's he's got the human brain in this concrete body, and um, so he's he doesn't require. I I don't even I can't remember if he requires food or not, but I don't think he requires food. He doesn't excrete anything, um, but he still has uh, human emotions and still has. Uh, feelings for people, and he gets very close to his two assistants. One's a scientist, the other is his assistant that drives him around. And um, it is really uh, an amazing book. I can't say enough about Concrete. Riley and I, two years ago, tr tried to get a book club established for uh, Concrete, and that was probably the biggest, one of our biggest failures ever. I think we got 
through one book and then it just fizzled out and went nowhere. But I highly recommend concrete to everybody. Um, are there proper collections of concrete, like a yeah. hardcover collection? Oh, no. It's just these uh, bigger than digest, but they're small, uh, one through seven. As far as I know, these are the only things, this is the only way it's been collected. Okay. And those are still in print, or are they yeah. out of print? Okay, cool. As far as um, I know, they're all still in print. They're not hard to get. So a couple more that I'm just going to talk about really quick because I have hyped this book enough. It's The First Kingdom by Jack Katz. Mm. A book that took well over 10 years for this man to finish. And the amazing detailed artwork that goes into each of these panels is insane. Um, it's a heavy read. It is dialogue heavy. And sometimes I had to push myself to read it, but I finished it. And it was really satisfying. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this stuff. And then the other one that I'm getting to the point where I I thought about should I should I recommend it because it's one of those books that everybody has on their list if it's black and white and it's Love and Rockets. I've wow. read uh, so far I've read two and a half volumes and I've enjoyed volume two a lot more than one, but I'm still having the at times like oh I need a break from this. I mean, or maybe I'm not getting it. What, what's going on with me? But there are people that swear by this book. There are people that say that it's better than Strangers in Paradise. Um, I mean, and it's quite a lot of books. We're talking about over 15 volumes of books that I, my wife bought me. So uh, I'm hoping the payoff is nice. But so far it's been okay. But this is one that I know people add on their list a lot. Um, somebody, Julio... He meant I'm curious about this book, Breath of Bones. Have you read that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have it right here. I read that. It's great. What What is it about? It's about. Oh, I'll read the. Wait a sec. I was looking up concrete. The first one is lightly out of print, and it looks like the second one's a little bit out of print too. When you mean um, a little bit, like you can get uh, it for th you can get these used good for three or four bucks on Amazon. So they they may be out of print, but they're not hard to find. I got you. Okay. So I've seen this cover so much. This and Rust, I think, was the name of the book. Oh, yeah. I have Rust somewhere. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll just name books off the top of my head and you show yeah, them off. Yeah, I'll show them off. So what is Breath of Bones? Because that looks gorgeous. I'll read you the back. A British plane crashes in the outskirts of a small Jewish town drawing the attention of Nazi forces to protect their homes and families. One man gives his life to create a creature of legend, the Gollum. Following the orders of the man's grandson, the Gollum fights for the town and becomes a friend no one expected. Jesus, Jess, you just did like an Omar Valdivieso third, fourth, and fifth grade book report. That's how I used to do it. <laughs> Copy the back of the book, baby. That's Omar, right. What was this book about? Some I always great do that. expectations. I just pulled up the book and read the back of it. Great expectations. <laughs> Nicholas that Nickleby. It was a guy in England. Um, so, yeah, actually, and somebody else mentioned Alan's War, which is a great book. Um, Alan's War is great, along with um, How the World Was. Those are uh, – um, uh, let me go get those, too. I want to talk about those because those are great books. Okay. And I'll sit here and say how I think everybody's talking about The Walking Dead right now. And I didn't mention that one because I that that's one that to me is okay. Um, it's better than the TV series for sure. But I preferred uh, in his uh, Invincible over Walking Dead. I feel like Walking Dead is just maybe, maybe the first 50 issues of Walking Dead was pretty good. But... After that, I don't know. I never. I it's one of those books that I just wait to read in collected editions, and it's there at the bottom of a pile. How, how did you feel about The Walking Dead, Jess? Never read it. Oh, never mind then. No, I have no opinion. I never read it. Yeah, uh, and people have brought it up in the chat, and yeah, that's why I didn't. It's one that I really don't recommend because I'm. I don't think it's that great, but um, I can see why people appreciate it, especially those first six issues by uh, Tony Moore. They're drawn really great. So what did you go get? Uh, I went to get, first one was How the World Was. It's um, a guy named Alan Cope, dictated uh, 
this um, his story. Cope was born in 1925 when California was still very much the frontier and life was both simpler and harsher. And it just tells the story of what it was like growing up in 19, late 20s, early 30s, um, California. And it's by a, um, it's beautifully illustrated. And I'm going to botch his name because he's French. Emmanuel Juibert. That's about the best I can do. Here's how you, here's how it's spelled. Emmanuel Juibert. I'm sure you probably don't even pronounce half his name since it's French. I'm um, not one to judge. <laughs> I'm not even, even going to attempt because Michael Cleveland's in the chat and he'll correct me. Um, so, yeah, the artwork is just brilliantly done in this book. Um, and then it had a sequel when Alan went off to war. It's called Alan's War by the same artist. And these are his memories of what it was like during World War um, II. And um, this is really well done. Uh, Two. These are two really great books that people. I don't. Uh, I really should promote these way more uh, because I. These are just brilliant works of art. I think uh, these two books. The guy led an interesting life, and it is beautifully rendered. I really dig that artwork. Yeah, it's. I. I think this guy must be extremely famous in France. From what I can tell. But yeah, Alan's War and How the World Was. And then I have... Yeah, I forgot about European books like the... Oh, yeah. Like Goddamn This War and things like that by Tardy. Or um, what is it? The Corto Martis. Um, but I get... Did you ever read Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud? Uh, I did back when it first came out, yeah. I did too. And that book had such an impact in the way that I read comic books. Like I don't think I would have enjoyed independent black and white comics had I not um, as early on in life. Like, you know, like I said, it was like mouse that I found in the, when I was in Saturday school in high school. But I think reading that, cause I read it in high school when it came out and it made me appreciate it a lot more in a way that a film class kind of made me appreciate a lot of, of you know, artsy films growing mm -hmm. up so yeah t um i you know i have never read any of his other stuff though i've never read what what was it zot right right he did. and then um what was that recent one he did sculpture sculpture Sculptor. that's it yeah that seems to be a polarizing book i it it was pretty dull for me till about three quarters of the way through when it yanked at me and kept me very interested um but it was it was tough. Uh, the first half of that book was pretty tough, sculptor. But uh, I mean, it had a couple twists in it that just knocked me backwards, and I immediately immediately kept turning on through it because then it got really interesting. Let's see. I have a couple others. Here's the exact opposite of R. Crumb's technique. That would be Charles Burns. Uh, this is Black Hole, and he's the exact opposite of Scritchy Scratchy R. Crumb. He just ladles on the black ink everywhere, and this is the story. This is an amazing story of a sexually transmitted disease um, in the upper northwest of America and what it does to the people there, playing up the high school anxiety and paranoia to the hilt. Um, it's really well told. And it's um, Charles Burns has done a lot of great stuff in black and white. His uh, artwork is amazing. Um, but yeah, I love Black Hole. Uh, this is already a famous book. I know lots of people know about it. So there's probably not much I can add to it other than um, I really enjoyed it. And it's a lot of fun in a kind of disturbing way. I'm going to go and say I did not like it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I I read it a couple of years ago. I just I the characters didn't click with me, and I think maybe some 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 of it had to do with the art. A lot of the characters looked the same, so I was kind of confused as to who was who. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, and I know it's it's regarded as one of the best uh, illustrated works too. But I just uh, I I didn't like that one. 
Okay. Uh, I know I know a lot of people love it, including yourself. I'm not shitting on your taste. I'm just saying I, I didn't like it. That is a smart comic that I did not like. <laughs> so one point universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the chat's bringing up the Eat or Not, and the Eat or Not was good. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. The Ch Chilean comic book? Right. That's considered um, a, a, a source of pride uh, nationwide in that country. Yeah, it's wonderful. They, I've read. Yeah. I think they're bringing his other stuff translated into English, too, like a couple of other books that he did. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, see, I forgot about. All that stuff is downstairs, all my European and foreign books, my manga. So um, I was just looking at the stuff here printed in America. But I think we got a really good li list, man. That's good. So, I mean, we didn't really get into debt about Bone because I didn't know you gave me Bone until I saw it in the chat. And that, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's kept downstairs, too. I have Bone, but it's the colored edition, so I can't show it. Ah, uh, Okay. <laughs> That's that's kind of cheating, yeah. But yeah. B B Bone would be up there for me. Um, like I said, if you haven't read Understanding Comics, and there's a lot of good European comics. Have we done a European comics conversation? Maybe we should do that. Um, I feel like we were going to, and then we just sat down one day, and we're naming off comics. Gee, I don't know if we've done that. I think that uh, would be a good topic, because I'd I like to know what you have, what you have read. And what Riley has read, yeah, um, or Gabe or Louise, you know, because um, and and see what you all like. Uh, yeah, Brian McCormick, um, Stray Bullets was one of the first ones that Omar talked about. As a matter of fact, just gave Omar bone. Um, Why'd you read that out loud? I had to. That's, <laughs> no, you that's, didn't. That's the only way I can read, Jess. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> 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 Judge Dredd. I've only read a few of that stuff. I had like a artist, or not artist editions, but artist centric Judge Dredd collections. I ended up selling because um they won't do uh, what's it called? Um, they're not, they weren't in sequent uh, chronological order, and I hate that. So mm. uh, I like Judge Anderson a lot. I don't read much Judge Dredd, but I like the psyops division or whatever it is uh judge anderson where she can read people's minds that's really cool ouch john p the man's not even here to defend himself He's saying i know uh riley's black and white pics right now <laughs> why are you reading that stuff out loud? <laughs> the severely dumb manga that has 74 bucks it cracked me up oh okay <laughs> i know he would say it if riley was here anyway but i thought it was funny are you guys excited for the Black Hammer Library Edition? Fuck yes. Yeah, I might. Is it going to cover uh, both books? Yes, I think so. I mean, it's mm. it's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. That's I, case from files. Tiny, that's what I needed to get from the from the paperbacks to a big library edition. That's a pretty. Uh, that is an upgrade I will do. I generally don't upgrade, but that's that's an upgrade I'll do. Oh, and I'm pretty bitter about Harrow County. I just finished getting like seven volumes of it, and now they're coming out with library editions of it. Oh, dude, just double dip. No, I don't want to. I know you don't want to, but you're going to. Did you really like it? I haven't read it yet. Oh, so that's it could, the thing. It could suck. Go ahead and upgrade. That way, if it sucks, <laughs> you yourself in the ass a lot, like twice as hard for upgrading something you haven't read yet. Uh, speaking of upgrade, I just did a video on my channel about um, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, the mm. Miles Morales book. I finished it today, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. Like, it was so good. It was maybe I was wrong about Bendis all this time. I don't think I was. It was just written different. Like, it didn't feel like Bendis wrote that book. I, I really, really liked it. Have you read any of that? The Miles Morales I not, stuff? No, I have not. Yeah, I heard uh, it's great. So I started it yesterday and then I finished it this morning. I mean, it's not that, you know, it's not dialogue heavy or anything. It's pretty, it's for a pretty quick read. But golly, I fell in love with Sarah Pacelli's artwork all over again too. Anyway, uh, so I could be wrong, Brian, Brian Michael Mendes, because I also like this uh, Man of Steel. I read. Uh, well, I liked issue one. Issue two kind of sucked balls, and issue three was good.
So mm. that one just came out yesterday. So I'm kind of excited to see what he does with DC, uh, the Superman stuff. Guess we'll see. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. So that is all the black and white stuff I have right now. Um, do you have any more? Well, I did enjoy Batman Black and White. Um, I loved all the different artists' take on it and all the different writers. I thought these were fun stories. I didn't think it was – I don't think it was super groundbreaking, but I thought they were fun short stories that, you know, pretty much captured the character. And I liked that they even tried to do it, what they did. They got some pretty high-caliber talent on this stuff. And I liked the um, – the different takes on the character from the different artists and writers. So I, you know, this is, this is fun for what it is, which was just a fun take on Batman. Yeah. I remember there were a lot of talented artists on that. I really liked like Kia Asamiya stuff, the Jim Lee stuff in black and white. Uh, Brian, Bol Brian Boland did some stuff. Somebody just mentioned from hell and I, I had totally mm. forgotten about that book being in black and white. Yeah, with Eddie Campbell's super scritchy, scratchy artwork. Yeah, I dug that that book. That was good. Um, yeah, but that's all I got. So next time so, we'll talk, talk about uh, manga that Jess has to read. You can do that while I'm on vacation. Uh, no. <laughs> you're you're gonna force it, it down my throat. Hell yes. <laughs> what What are friends for? I think we've already done a manga episode, didn't we? Oh, no, we did an anime episode. I think, yeah, I think you guys did. But you guys uh, did not do a proper manga episode, which is making you suffer through it. That was it. Uh, Ryan, I see. Ryan McCormick, yeah, we mentioned Mouse at the towards the beginning. We did. Uh, manga sucks. Wow, these guys are elitist. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Don't be so close-minded. Not everything is tentacles and schoolgirls. <laughs> Contrary to what Gabe believes. <laughs> but, I mean, there really isn't much wrong with that. So what's next? You want to uh, take some questions, man? Sure. Why don't we take questions for five minutes, and then we can uh, call it a night. Yes. Good call. Good call. I don't think we're going to be Dark Satari. You keep mentioning erotic comics. As much as I love to show off my good girl art books, I don't think that that's something we're going to be doing. My cheesecake books. I don't have any anymore. I, I get, like. Um, what about your Monera stuff? Yeah, I bought that for the art, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I really did. Okay. That's so pathetic, but I really did. Like, I'm not doubting it. When I was uh, when I was younger, you know, when I was fourteen, fifteen. Thank God, my comic book uh, store guy didn't give a shit how old I was for these mature books. Like I would get a what was it like the real porn star stories, like things like that. Um, and um, <laughs> I I remember when I started like uh, dating girls, I'm like I gotta get rid of this stuff or no woman's gonna want to mess with me. And I gave them to my buddy, who, um, Seth. So Seth, Seth ended up with my box of uh, erotic comic books, if you will. Nice. Um, they were used, so he took. He knew that ahead of time. So, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, other than the Minara erotica, I don't. I don't really have anything else. Even the manga I have is clean. I live such a boring, sad life, man. Mm, I have a completely secret life that I don't tell my wife about. I tell you guys about it, but not my wife. <laughs> All your good girl books? Yeah, you guys know about that, but my wife does not. Uh, yeah, so do all our sponsors at InStock Trades, their parents. <laughs> their mom. <laughs> They're in the chat. <laughs> um, all right, are there any questions yet? Um, not really. Not really. No. Yeah, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind is one of the best manga ever. I would have put that in my top five. 
they're talking about that. How old is Jess? That is a good question. Old enough to know better than to ask answer that question. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Um, let's see. Omar's opinion on current state of X-Men titles and the titles post-Secret Wars. Well, that's a good question. Um, not good. Not great. I, um, I kind of like X-Men Gold. It annoys me less than the other titles. I'll, actually, I take it back. I love All New Wolverine, but that just wrapped up. And that's going to be a perfect omnibus size. That is a wonderful read. Um, X-23 grew on me as the new Wolverine, and I'm sad to see it go. X-Men Red has been pretty good so far. I really like the first issue and the other uh, three and four in the annual. They were, they were actually good. I liked Weapon X at the beginning, but then it just... I don't know. I don't know what the hell they're doing. And the Omega Red, they're rehauling the team. Uh, Old Man Logan started to uh, not be that great, and X-Men Blue just annoys the piss out of me. No, what about X-Men Red? I heard that was supposed to be good. Yeah, did you fall asleep? Did you... Yeah, I did, sort of. <laughs> I fall asleep when I was talking. <laughs> that was awesome. I just mentioned that like uh, 30 seconds ago. I'm like, X-Men Red is good. Oh, I thought I heard you say something different. I was looking at yeah, the chat. All... There's all these colors, man. X-Men Red is solid. I like that a lot. Um, I'm kind of excited about the wedding of uh, Kitty Pride and Colossus. Uh, but like I said, X-Men Gold is hit or miss. And the state of the X-Men comics since Secret Wars has just been eh, okay. Um, I don't know if they're going to do another re rehaul with a relaunch of numbers or what they're planning on doing now that Wolverine is coming back. But um feels weird. I, I feel like I would be enjoying these books a lot more now that, you know, we have most of the characters back, even though it's like a crappy version of Professor X, like Phantom X Professor X. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to see who Chris M is talking about. 60% man reminds me. Huh. Chris M. Yeah, I was just wondering who he was talking about. Okay, I guess it's not that important. Uh, Chinese Superman is good. I like it. New Superman. I like it a lot. I liked uh, it too. It got canceled. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh. Um, I thought I'm it was not... fun. Yeah, I did too. Um, Chris Am is talking about a dentist. Yeah, I saw that. I was trying to figure out who he was talking about. Uh, Josh Angel, thoughts on Cerebus? Um, I can't stand Cerebus uh, I, because that is one of the weird times. Usually I'm able to separate comic from creator. Um, I can't in this case because the creator has put so much of himself into the character and his attitude towards women. Uh, it makes me sick. I can't stand Cerebus. I can't stand Dave Sims. I don't dig his attitude towards women. I think he is uh, an incredible chauvinistic jerk. And Cerebus is exactly the acts exactly the same as Dave Sims is. They're intertwined, so I can't separate the two. I hate them both. I love Cerebus. I love his attitude towards women. <laughs> I, I know nothing. Dude, I read like many, probably over 20 years ago, I read the first volume of Cerebus. And I, I kind of dug it. But apparently, like, the guy had like a downward spiral in his personal life as the volumes went on. And he mm. wrote a lot of himself into later volumes. I never finished it. Like, it got really political. Mm -hmm. I, know people, I know people hated that. Um, what started like a fun adventure kind of book, which is what I've read, ended into like this. Like exactly what you said, he wrote himself into the story almost. And I know we, you and I had talked about that before because I didn't know if you had read it. And, um, and you know, you mentioned separating yourself from the artist. I, I tend to do that too. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't enjoy Michael Jackson's music or things like that. Like I have to separate the art from the yeah. artist. I've, I've always been able to do that. Um, yeah, I can't think of a single case where that's bothered me yet. So I don't, I don't know. That's the um, one. That's the one. That's place. the one that bothers you, huh? Yeah. Just because he wrote, I mean, wrote so much of himself into the character, I just couldn't separate it anymore, and I just said, "Forget it." 
Uh, Super Sons Omnibus. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Super Sons is one of the most fun comics out there. It is Absolutely. great. Absolutely. I agree. I cannot wait for that. I'm glad they canceled the oversized hardcover and just decided to do an omnibus. I'm excited for the second series that's coming out, too, of Super Sons. Um, Tolga had a good question. Battle Angel Alita box set. Yes, Jess is going to buy it because I'm going to tell him how wonderful it is, and he will <laughs> let it sit there and wait till it goes out of print <laughs> for those right. people that really wanted it. I'll wait till it goes out of print, and then I'll panic and buy it for five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised, Lloyd, that we don't have a Lemire um, Old Man Logan collection yet. I'm not sure why. Maybe they don't. I guess Marvel doesn't think Lemire would sell. Not sure. I have the Wonder Woman Rebirth, Greg Rucka run and trades. What order would you recommend reading them in? Um, straight through. That's one and well, well, yeah, one and two, because one is the it's the stuff in the past, right? I have the hardcover. They alternate. Oh, the trades alternate. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. It's yeah, okay. you can. It's yeah, you hard. can read them straight through because that's the way they were printed. That's fine. I read them in the hardcover, so they separated the past from uh, the current stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, Punisher Rucket also not collected. Well, it's collected but out of print and hard to find. That's that really needs to be a yeah. I don't know why. Omnibus. That's crazy. It seems like Marvel just favors other you know some creators. Like they love Jonathan Hickman and Jason Aaron. Like anything they do, you can almost bet they're going to be in omnibus collections. I'm not sure why Lemire or Rucka didn't get that love. Shalita box set, yes. <laughs> Most violent crossed. Oh god, Gabe loves that fucking book. <laughs> Most violent comic ever read. Hmm. That's a good question. I haven't read Crossed. I know you guys have. I have read Crossed. I've re I read a lot of it. I I, I would can't say, think of another book that's more violent than that. I would say maybe Battle Royale, the manga bunch of underage kids that have to kill each other off on an island for a competition and a lot of that stuff is dark and dark like berserk it makes you feel dirty but in a good way <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way i can describe it how are omar are you buying the new 52 red hood omni no e tyler i am not unless i see it at a liquidated price of maybe, maybe $30, because I love Kenneth Rockefeller's art. It's hard to pass up on that, because I love oversized art. But that story was just so bad. Uh, thoughts on Roger Stern's Spider-Man? Buy it. It's wonderful. Alone, the kid that collects... what? What is it? The kid that collects Spider-Man? That storyline alone? Mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Yeah, that's a classic story. That... that the, the whole run is so good. The Hobgoblin stuff, the Juggernaut stuff, all that stuff is solid. I'm, I cannot wait for a, a Avengers Roger Stern omnibus. I hope they do one. I hope we get two. Dark equals no longer human. I love no longer human, Tolga. That's one of the best manga I've ever read. Jess, favorite Batman era run? I can um, answer that. Neil Adams, Batman Odyssey. Got it. Did that. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for answering for me. Uh, I would have said Den Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams Batman back in the um, late 60s, early 70s. But I think that was supplanted by Scott Snyder's Batman, which I think is going to get supplanted by Tom King's Batman. Uh, I'm not caught up on Tom King's Batman, but it's pointing in a direction. I love Scott Snyder's Batman, but I think i might be loving tom king's even more which i didn't think possible um do you think it's better than would you say it's better than nightfall uh by a hair <laughs> i'm gonna ban you right now I'm, <laughs> what the fuck i'm gonna get rid of you right now that would be awesome if you did that and I can't come back <laughs> <after my> vacation. <laughs> um that's good have you i i did um now I didn't start that far back because, like I've all I've said this many times, 
my DC universe started post Crisis on Infinite Earths. So I did a chronological read through of all my Batman collected editions about three, four years ago, starting with Batman Year One. Um, but there was some really good stuff in there that I'm surprised hasn't been collected yet in omnibus format, like Legacy and Contagion and No Man's Land. And I really enjoyed The Fugitive and Murder too. That stuff was good. A lot more stuff deserves to be collected than just for some reason they just think that uh, Nightfall needs to stay in collected edition. Uh, Tolga Burke says, Omar, please make videos about your custom binding. Omar and I uh, was oh, that yeah, for my that. channel? That was on your channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for my channel, we did do a whole custom binding episode, Toga. So if you go on, I feel like that was maybe in January or February. If you want to go back to to my channel and scroll back a little, we did a whole custom binding episode. And Omar has some really cool books that he had bound. Definitely, that was a fun episode. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I remember having bad allergies that day. <laughs> um, and I had come back from a, a oh, that's right, a funeral or something because I was wearing a suit. Maybe it was a wedding, funeral, something. I can't remember. Yeah, that was not a good day for you. I remember. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What titles do you guys prefer, Action or Superman, Detective or Batman? Ooh, tough choices. I'm gonna go with Action. Uh, no, Superman. I'm sorry. I take it back, Superman, because Superman. It's from uh, Mr. O'Rod. It's an awesome uh -huh. name. Okay, oh rod. So I'm gonna go with Superman because that is more of a family oriented Superman. I really like that. I never thought I would, but it's been so good. And I'm gonna go with um oh see Batman to me, I didn't like Batman at first. It took me a while to get into it. By the time the second uh hardcover with I am Bane came mm -hmm. out, I thought that had picked up. But from the get-go, Detective had me hooked. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Detective Comics for mine over Batman. Because I like the Bat Family aspect of things. Even though <clears throat> it dragged on a little bit without Tim in the second volume, mm -hmm. I'm really, really uh, looking forward to the third volume. Uh, I agree with you. I like Superman better than action. Um, but I like... I don't know. I, I do love Batman, and I just said that Tom King's Batman was going to be my favorite. And then I started thinking about how fun Detective is with it being really a Batwoman book. Um, but I'm going to say Batman just because I love uh, where he's... Um, I, I actually have to read... I've got it somewhere. This weekend, I have to get caught up on all my deluxe rebirths because volume. I have a bunch of volume twos around, and it's been so long since I read volume one, I'm going to have to start reading one and two of all these Rebirth Deluxes. I'm a, I'm a good chunk of the way through my Hickman readathon, so I can take a break. Um, That's right, you're doing that. And get caught up on Rebirth, which is what I need to do. This is, uh, this is a question that was brought up when we were doing uh, on my channel, Old Reader, New Readers, is uh, who wins out of all the Robins? There's only one right answer, Jess, and you know this. <laughs> but who, who's your favorite Robin? Oh well, I grew up with Dick Grayson as Robin, so Nightwing is my favorite. Or Dick Grayson Robin's my favorite Robin. Eh. Tim Drake is the correct answer. Tim Drake is also a good one. He is not the right answer. Dick Grayson not, is the right answer. I think Tim Drake is the right answer. Dick, Dick Grayson grew up and became Nightwing. He became his own identity, whereas. Tim Drake earned it. Drake's an amazing character, man. I love him. He does. Ever, ever since from Lonely Place of Dying, I, I have loved that character. Um, even though they, I kind of like Damien. And I, I like asshole Damien, but not in the role of uh, Robin. But I love, I've always loved Tim Drake in the role of Robin. Yeah, Tim Drake is cool. He's not the coolest, but he is cool. Uh, okay, I see what you did there. But yeah. that's okay. You can be wrong every once in a while. Yeah, all right. Okay, it's time for you to go. <laughs> what? I didn't say anything about Nightfall. You just said it. Yeah, okay. Well, you forced me. <laughs> yeah. Please kill Damien. He is <laughs> Deathstroke's kid. Uh, Jimmy Owens is taking a short break from superhero comics to catch up on image stuff. Good for you, Jimmy. That's what I do. I Good tend idea. To take, yeah, I tend to take breaks in between superhero and then do independent stuff. 
uh, do manga. Although my manga reading has kind of slowed down a lot, mainly due to this channel because it gets a lot of hate. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't give a shit what Jess or anybody else does. I don't hate it. I just said it wasn't for me. Stop it. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. What have you read so far in your Hickman readathon, Mr. O Rod says? Um, I have read Secret Warriors, Architects of uh, Forever from Shield, Fantastic Four One, Fantastic Four Two, and I am now in the middle of Ultimate Comics Thor. Oh Hickman damn, you're going into the Ultimate stuff, huh? Yeah, it was on the sheet that said Hickman's reading order or whatever, so. Uh, I got done with Architects of Forever today. I got done with Fantastic Four 2 over the weekend, or maybe even two nights ago, I think. I got done with Fantastic Four 2, Omni, and um, so, yeah, I am I think I'm on a good pace. I, I believe I will be able to burn through, um, well, I'm not going to be able to burn through Avengers because it weighs 40 pounds, but um, I think that I'll be in good position when Avengers uh, Hickman Avengers volume two comes out um, and I have secret wars. So I should be, this is a doable readathon. I don't know if I'm halfway through or not, depending on how many books, but I've knocked out three omnis and a couple hardcovers. So that's good. Uh, thank, thank you for the kind words, Chris M. That's nice. Though David, David Ottenborough can do any documentary and I would watch it. It could be a documentary of just about two flies fucking, and I would find it interesting with that guy's voice. I love that man's voice. Um, old people can't read left to right. Um, that's the problem. Old people can't read right to left. Is that what it is, Jess? Think. Uh, I don't know any old people that read manga, so I don't know. <laughs> I haven't picked up Captain Harlock yet. I, I want to. Dave, uh, uh, Jess kindly bought me the devil man manga that i read actually i did read that that was oh, you awesome. did yes oh, good. It was great uh because i hadn't read a lot of that stuff from back in the 60s and early 70s the only other stuff i've read from that age was probably like things like speed racer and it, and of course tasuka stuff but that stuff is just timeless but it was interesting to read that because um there are so many things that feel outdated but it was so awesome i really liked it it felt like watching the original anime So thank you very much for that, my friend. Jess, who cleans and dusts your comics room? Please bring wife on show. Uh, my wife's not allowed in this room. I dust everything. I clean and dust everything. Nobody touches my statues uh, and stuff but me. I clean it all. So there you go. I... Uh... I, I don't think I've ever dusted. I like the character that it builds. <laughs> the character. <laughs> I remember that's like, um, I know you, you've you seen some of the stuff in my toy room, but it's it's pretty big. And for normal muggles, people that don't collect shit like we do, when they walk in there, some, one of my favorite things I hear, and I've heard it quite often is, how do you dust all this stuff? And I'm like, I don't fucking dust. <laughs> Look at these things. <laughs> I don't even transform my transformers. I'm such a fake ass collector. <laughs> <laughs> Leave them in robot mode. Fuck that car mode. I don't need them. <laughs> uh, have you lost, broken any statues, Jess? Um, I haven't myself. Uh, I have a Zatanna statue, a cover girl Zatanna where she's got a flame effect in her hand. And I didn't notice it till Gio pointed it out, but I displayed it and the flame display was broken. I went back into the box and there was the other half of the little frame display and they were already sold out of it. So they gave me like a $10 credit on it or something. Uh, and I super glued the flame back together. Um, but yeah, I was disappointed in that, that it came broken. Jess, are you aware of E3? Uh, and if yes, any announcement that you were happy with? Yeah. Um, uh, Luis and I talked about E3 last night on the Wednesday show. Um, I already took the uh, article down on uh, what I was looking forward to. But I think 
What I'm looking forward to most is probably Red Dead Redemption 2. I remember playing that first game. Uh, and I wish Shenmue 3 would come out some year. I mean, it's only been... Did you like Shenmue? I did. It was one of oh, my favorite dude. games ever. Oh, shit. Oh, my level of respect for you just went back up. Like, it's, you know, it's still here, but it went up. <laughs> That's awesome. After it that. dropped, it went yeah, back up? I mean, you weren't that high to begin with but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no that's great i love that game i love shenmue i you... love shenmue one and two it was great like, i didn't give a shit about the game shenmue i just like collecting the little gashapon figures the little capsule toys they would oh. the <laughs> that's the way i played it like a dumbass collector <laughs> uh, but yeah i'm excited about three you're not excited about smash brothers ultimate man 70 characters on the screen uh i know i i remember playing smash brothers a lot with my daughter um what did that come out on? Did that come out on the GameCube or was the first it N64? one was that on the, six, the six, N64 had the first? Yeah, one. we played that on her Nintendo 64. We played that and Mario Kart and um, Mario Party like one through four on her N64 relentlessly when she was little. Oh yeah, yeah, it's so it's so good. I I love those days and I'm glad they're bringing it back. The the um. I, I think Nintendo did an awesome job during E3. I'm probably the game that I'm most excited about though is Last of Us 2. I love that game. Yeah, that's what we talked about a lot last night. I kind of figured you guys did that, but that that first game blew me away. That is the first game I think I've ever done everything, got every single trophy on, and things like that. I never do that with video games because I don't give a shit like extra like but like side stories or extra downloadable content. I don't, really don't care about that. But th that game was the only game I've done that on. Last of Us? Mm -hmm, the first one. Yeah. Um, I'm in the middle of playing that with my daughter. I think she's coming over Saturday for us to play some more. She's really into it. Um, yes, I'm glad you guys are playing it together. I think it's awesome. It makes it less sad when you're playing it with your kid right there. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Re that's a remarkable video game. I really like it. Uh, PUBG Mobile, anybody for Cycle Cleveland? He's asked more than once. Anybody? PUBG Cycle Cleveland. I got you, buddy. I got you. I do not play that game. I don't either. I actually liked Black Magic by Greg Greca. So I'll just put a plug in for that. I enjoyed Black Magic, but that was two years ago when I read the first one, and I read it in the hospital. I was all doped up, uh, getting my knees replaced. So I don't even remember it. I just remember liking it. <laughs> Shaq Fu: The Return. Shit. <laughs> I don't know. That first game was so horrible. Gabe, you cuck. <laughs> uh, Gabe dropped it in the <laughs> that word today in the omnibus page. That's so yeah, funny. I'm sure somebody had to go to Urban Dictionary to figure <laughs> out. Um, let's see. I'm gonna say that. There was another question in here. Oh, less of us made me late for work. Yes. Me too. I took a day off from work, Shorty Larson, to play that. Did game. you? We yeah, had to play that game. And Tyler Trent, you're right. We do want Waluigi. Nobody more so than Waluigi. Uh, Gabe's a cuckold. Yes, he is. How are the Jeff Johns Green Lantern omnibus bindings? Bad DC binding. Um, I didn't have a problem with them. I didn't the only either. one, the only DC omnibus that I had um, issue with was. The infinite, the original Infinite Crisis uh, omnibus, um, the Hawkman omnibus, and in the binding, as far as like it was just like a fucking mouse trap, and then um, there was another book in there too. That the it was just a tight binding. That's the only issues I had with it. But I don't remember having green issues with Green Lantern or JSA or any of his other stuff. I think they're they're good. Hmm. It's uh, Rocky Two, Cycle Cleveland, not Rocky One. 
catch chickens in Rocky too. <laughs> no, Flanker, it never did, brother. We're still waiting on Transformers Classic UK 6. Who knows? Sledge, I haven't read Shakan the Forever Man comic. Um, I really like that guy's art, though. I see him at a lot of conventions. I don't. Um, I know they made that Genesis game. It, it's awesome. Uh, look at Omar. No, this is lack of facial hair, Gabe. That's right. I haven't been on a show with you guys for like 10 days. Got all shaved for all these job interviews. Nice. Uh, Jess, are the prequel and final inco worth it? Oh, yeah. Have you read? Um, it's a good question for you. Have you read the prequel and fi before ink call and final ink call? I did, and I didn't find them as compelling as the ink call. Um, I mean, you can you can get them and enjoy them, but uh, I don't I don't think you have to. They're not they're not required to enjoy it. But I mean, they're they're interesting, but not. I don't think anything's as good as the ink call itself. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I think I tend I tend to like before ink call a lot more than I did final ink call. Maybe that was because mm -hmm. of the creative team in it. Um, right. But um, you're right. I don't, I don't think it's as good as the original. I, I do like the what's it called Met Metabarons, Meta Metabarons, Barons. Yeah, I haven't read that. I really like that stuff. Uh, is Gabe asking us a question? What's up with Hickman's shield hardcovers? Is the material spread across two different books? Uh, you're the one that just read this stuff. So yeah. is it? Uh, it is. The first one, um, the second one's coming out, I believe, the last week of July, which completes the story. It has um, shield infinity and then the second part of the uh, shield run, I think, Issues five and six, and then one through four of a separate thing, and then infinity, and that will complete the collection. It's going to be across two hardcover books. Um, and I read the first half. I finished it today. And that is, that's a pretty amazing book. I'm still wrapping my head around it. Um, it's going to, I'm going to have to really think long and hard about my review on that once the next one comes out. Because I, I can't review it yet because it's not a finished story, but it's pretty complex. I mean, he tells a that's way more complex than any of the other books. It's amazing. I haven't read his shield, so I've read everything else he's done except for that shield, other than the first couple of issues of the original shield uh, architects book that he did. So I, I need to yeah. get on that. I'm hoping they'll do a complete collection or a hardcover complete collection, but I don't know. Uh, Omar, did you like the Bumblebee trailer? I'll tell you this. I was almost fooled into going, fuck yes, this looks awesome when I saw the Generation 1 Starscream fly. And then I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. It still looks like Michael Bay stuff. I know he's not directing it, but it almost fooled me into almost saying, fuck yes. But maybe. <laughs> I haven't picked up the new uh, Meta Bronze book, Sledge. So I don't know if they're good or not. Um, all right, Jess. Let's call it a night, buddy. Unless uh, you want to answer one more question. <laughs> one more is going to, as Jimmy Owens points out, one more is going to oh, last I love how another five, 20 minutes. Five minutes of questions <laughs> turns into 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, in stock trades for your complete collection needs. You can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2 to 3%. There's a quarterly Omnibros Live discount. Order $50 or more in the United States and your shipping is free. Fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's instocktrades.com. Our buddies there. We know them and their parents and everything. Oh, yeah. Good friends. Good judges of characters, too. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. It was great. Uh, we will see you back on Monday. You can find me on my YouTube channel called Near Mid Condition where uh, I do a lot of the same stuff here with a different set of friends that I cheat on Jess with. I know, and I'm not happy about that. Yeah, I know. I know you're not. feels wrong sometimes. feels like I'm, I'm good. using my left hand instead of my right hand. But anyway, that is my show, Near Me Condition, and um, you're the right hand, Jess. Calm down. Okay. And, yeah, check us out. And 
Jess, where can they find you, my good man? They can find me on Omni Dogs Vault on YouTube and Omni Dogs underscore Vault on Instagram. So thank you very much, everybody. The chat was lively tonight. We had a good chat. Uh, we even stayed about, talked about comics for a while, which is great. Um, appreciate everybody coming in and uh, please subscribe, hit the like button, listen to us. Uh, on podcasts through iTunes and whatever the Android app is. So thank you, everybody. You guys are all great. And peace and love, peace and love. Good night, everybody. <laughs>